The Dallas Stars lose in overtime yet again, this time to the Boston Bruins. And while it was a great game and while the team is happy to have come away with at least a point, the power play has been lacking. And on today's episode, we talk about why the power play has been struggling and even hear from Jason Robertson and Joe Pavelski and get their thoughts on why the Stars' man advantage is struggling to produce all of that and more on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more and visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if uh, if you're watching on YouTube or the follow button on your favorite podcasting platform. Always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. Dallas Stars and the Boston Bruins, the, the game of the week, some would say. D- delivered on all of the hype. It was an exciting game. Uh, I think really the only other live Stars game I've seen in person with that much energy in the building uh, was game four of the Stanley Cup playoffs last year against the Calgary Flames, the only game I got to be at in person. And that was, it was the exact same energy in the AAC on Tuesday night. Tons of Bruins fans in attendance, but the Stars fans doing their part to support the team. And again, a, a great game all around but unfortunately it ends with with an ending that stars fans have grown accustomed to seeing uh, over the past month or so and that is an overtime loss a three to two uh, overtime loss at that and while that does sting you also are, are happy to get a point out, out of a game against the best team in the national hockey league bruins reeling a little bit their record not great coming into this matchup over their last five or six games This was an ideal time to be playing them, an ideal opportunity to come away with two points on a night where, uh, you know, the Winnipeg Jets get a win. They're now only two points behind the Stars. Could have been a big night all around, but the thing that will haunt the Stars from this game uh, is the lack of production on the power play. And it's really been an issue, even kind of leading into the All Star break, and especially since coming back from the All Star weekend and All Star break, the Stars week off. The power play has been off. Uh, Special teams was a strong point for the Stars early on this season, and the penalty kill is still delivering. It's one of, if not the best kills in the entire league, but the power play has just gone cold. And and 0 for 4 on the evening were the Stars in this game against the Bruins, and they had every kind of opportunity you could hope for. They had traditional 5-on-4. They had a 5-on-3 at one point in the game with a 2-1 lead. And they also got a four on three opportunity in overtime and failed to execute. And you just know that that's lingering in the back of the minds of all of the players and coaches, knowing that if they bury even just one of those, this game probably ends differently. And the team probably leaves the American Airlines Center on Tuesday night with two points instead of just one. But let's go ahead now and hear from two members of that star's power play, Joe Pavelski and Jason Robertson. And then we'll also hear from their coach, Pete DeBoer, and get all of their thoughts on the Stars' power play right now and maybe what they could do to get it fixed or when we might expect to, to see things get back on track. You know, Jake, he gave us a good chance in the first. Made a few huge saves. So come out there. We're, you know, I think our game got better. And we get those looks on the power play. You want to you cash in. You know, it's been a little dry lately, so that's on us to figure it out. There's... You know, we get to put out there in those moments. It's we gotta we gotta have something. So a little disappointing there, a little frustrating, but we'll keep keep working through it. There's definitely more space on certain things, and um, regardless of what it is, you you gotta make a play. You know, you still gotta teams are defending and tightening things up, and you gotta you know stick when you gotta make a shot. You gotta find a loose puck, and um, 
you know, so there, there's still things you can do on them and things we need to do better on. You know, at times you're, you're looking, you get that little space, um, kind of run something, and then you got to play a little bit of hockey, and there's, you know, certain sets you're looking at, and depending on what they're doing and trying to make plays. But it's, yeah, I mean, after certain things, you, you got to play hockey and move the puck and um, you know, make that play. It doesn't feel great, um, especially when you go for on the power play. Um, definitely let our team down. I think when they're powerfully successful, we get tips, pucks go in, but uh, yeah, I mean, more shots, I guess. Um, I don't know, coaching staff will look at it, we'll all look at it, and uh, we'll have to make adjustments accordingly. Four on three is a little tighter, um, that's five on four, I think five on four, they're more, there's a lot more pressure uh, from the penalty killers, but uh, regardless, it's the same goal uh, to score, and uh, we didn't do that tonight, and recently we haven't been too great. Uh, Obviously, we've got to cash in on, a, on one of those power plays. You know, five on three, four on three, you've got to score on those. So, you know, we know that. And, uh, you know, unfortunately right now uh, we've hit a little bit of a dry spell. But it happens to everyone. I was, you know, I think, I think Boston's 0 for 18 or 19 now too. So, and that's a great team, you know, on the power play. So, you know, we'll, we'll get it figured out. They, they, they're definitely all different situations. Um, you know, and uh, you know, you know. Obviously, the the one that hurts the most is the five on three in the in the during regulation time. I mean, that that's when it was almost full two minutes. It felt like, and uh, you know, that those are the ones that you've got to stick a puck in the net. Four on three is a little bit tougher, but uh, you know, we just we got to find a way. I think we've we have simplified things. It's just execution. It's getting you know sometimes just getting an ugly one. You know, some something to go off a leg or a rebound or a tip or uh, you know when when you're rolling like we have been on a roll for diff- at different points this year. It's like you can't miss. And you hop over the boards with that confidence, and you know when you don't have it. You know, you uh, everything's off just a little bit. So um, that's where we're at, but we'll, we'll fight through it. We'll find it again. Let's hope the Stars do find it again sooner rather than later because a big part of their success early on in the year was them executing on the power play. And if a team like the Boston Bruins is going to give you four looks at the man advantage and one of those is, you know, 60 seconds of five on three, and you don't execute, I, I don't really know what you can expect. And I, I mean, you can hear it, I and mean, you can hear it in all the interviews, especially with the players. I mean, I, you can tell they're frustrated as well. I mean, they're doing everything in their power to fix this. I mean, they were getting good looks. I think you also do have to give credit to Linus Olmark, who's been maybe the best goalie in the NHL this season in terms of save percentage. And, you know, the Bruins penalty kill also pretty good, but the Stars still got plenty of shots on goal during their power plays. And sometimes you just go up against a guy like Andre Vasilevsky or uh, Linus Olmark, and that is that. And I think the Stars just need to have a game, and all these guys said it in their post-game interviews. They need to have a game where you know they get two or three to go in, and even if they're ugly ones that you know bounce off one of the opposing players' skates or bounces off a Stars player's stick when they don't really know that the shot's coming or something like that. I mean, they don't always have to be pretty. We need to see it get back on track soon, though, because it's starting to get to a point where the lack of production on the power play is costing the Stars points. I think, again, they get at least one of these, if not more, of these power play opportunities to you know end with a goal. This game ends very, very differently, and I think it ends in favor of the Dallas Stars, and they get out of this contest with two points and maybe even a resounding two points. But here we are on the other side. Jake Ottinger, a great performance. I don't want to say wasted because the Stars did pick up a point. But Jake Ottinger not getting the support he needs. Speaking of Jake Ottinger, we'll talk a little bit about him after we're gonna after this break. We're going to take a minute and say thank you to one of our sponsors. And then we'll talk about and hear from Jake Ottinger. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. 
Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA and the Locked On Stars podcast. Thank you again for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Continuing to talk about last night's game, another stellar performance from Stars goaltender Jake Ottinger. I mean, this going into this matchup, we knew that this was going to be a premier game of two of the best goalies in the NHL, the top two netminders in terms of save percentage. Both of these guys have been rocks for their team this season. And Ottinger and Olmark both delivered uh, on the billing here and left you know, left it all out, out there on the ice. And I think both guys gave their team an excellent chance to win the game. Unfortunately for the Stars, it was Olmark and his crew that leave Dallas with two points. But Jake Ottinger, certainly nothing to be ashamed of, saving 34 of 37 shots and also uh, coming up big at points on the Bruins power play. They had three power play opportunities in their own right, generated 37 shots on goal. Pretty good night for number 29 in between the pipes and i think if if there's something that we can take away from this game uh, i mean outside of just the one point that the stars did acquire from forcing overtime in this one it's that jake ottinger continues to show that that he's ready for the big moments of course this is just a regular season game so in, in the long term you know the the outcome of this game doesn't mean a ton but it's still a big game. I mean, a, a big name opponent, plenty of offensive firepower on this team on full display. And, and Jake Ottinger just seems time and time again to rise to the occasion. We have to talk to Jake a little bit after the game. So let's go ahead now and hear Jake Ottinger's thoughts on his performance in the game as a whole from Tuesday night. It's two good teams and went to OT again. So it's could have gone either way. Felt good. Uh, you know, we know what we're up against over there. We're the best team in the league for a reason, and you know, we went to overtime with them, so we can play with anyone. It's tough, and you know, last year it felt like we won every every OT. So it goes that way sometimes. It's just fun. I mean, you wanna you wanna test yourself against the best in the league, and um, they're a heck of a team. They're having an historic year, so it's easy to get up for games like this. And uh, you know, it was a fun game, but you know, didn't get the two points. Jake Ottinger certainly was up for this game. And I mean, we've seen it several times this season. He's come up and played in these massive games, whether they're on prime time or even going back to last season. He was huge for this team down the stretch. And of course, who can forget what he did in the Stanley Cup playoffs against the Calgary Flames? And if there's anything that we've learned from you know the, the, the competition here, the Stars, especially against the Eastern Conference, is that I think that they're they're ready to be considered a contender this season in large part to Jake Ottinger and what he does. And if you've been listening over the past few weeks, especially uh, the off week right before the All-Star weekend, had several different guests on and got to ask a lot of them, okay, if the Dallas Stars find themselves hoisting the Stanley Cup at the end of the season, what is the reason for that? And almost every answer that I've gotten, whether on this podcast or even just having this conversation off the air the answer is almost always jake ottinger and that's really how you get wins in the postseason is having excellent goalie play sure you you got to score goals you've got to have guys that can drive the net and the stars have those pieces talk a little bit about them later on but jake ottinger has been the hero time and time again and he nearly put the stars in a position to come away from this game with two points and really i mean it's hard to pin any of this on him Both times the Bruins get a goal in regulation, he's left out to dry a little bit, especially uh, on that Taylor Hall goal. Again, I mean, that's a beautiful pass, great play from Hampus Lindholm there, but, I mean, no one else there in the slot with Jake, and, I mean, that puck comes in so quick, he has hardly any time to react at point-blank range. And then even the Pavel Zaka goal in transition, Zaka's kind of out there on an island, and he takes a shot and just beats Jake, you know, fair and square. But... Jake still comes up and makes some huge saves at some pivotal moments in the game. And we just continue to see that this guy is ready for anything. There is no moment too big for Jake Ottinger. And so if there's any comfort we can take from a loss like this, besides the point itself, 
It's that we 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 have our rock and goal. Uh, things are not necessarily great at times during the regular season. It's an 82 game campaign, and you're going to have losses like this. I think Stars fans have been treated to way too many of them, if you ask me. But you you got to take what you can get, and, and a lot of times it's these overtime games. So Stars they're finding ways to pick up points, even if it's not as many as you would like them to be picking up. And again, a huge part of that is Jake Ottinger, and I think that. The, the, the fruit will, will come to fruition. It, it, you know, we will, the stars will bear the fruits of their labor, if you will, uh, once the playoffs roll around. And Jake Ottinger, I imagine, is going to rise to the occasion, regardless of who they meet in the first round. And if they advance far in the postseason, a huge part of it uh, will be the performance of number 29 between the pipes. We're going to take one more quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the stars' top line. They had an excellent game on Tuesday night, scoring both goals for the team. So we'll talk more about Jason Robertson, Rope Hints, and Joe Pavelski right after this. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious treat but don't want all of the fat and calories? Then you've got to try a Built Bar. What makes Built Bars taste so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. And they come in unbelievably delicious flavors such as churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not quite sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And that's even better. They're actually healthy and good for you with only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been telling you to order your Built bars at Built.com. But now you can go and get them at your Walmart or local Sam's Club. So you can order them online or go into the store and pick up some of those delicious flavors that I talked about a second ago and and so much more to choose from. So be sure to check out some Built Bars today, whether that's at Walmart, Sam's Club or Built.com. And we're closing out today's episode talking a little bit about the Stars top line. They certainly came to play in this matchup exactly what you need in a game like this. Of course, Jake Ottinger rose to the occasion. We expect that from him, and we expect it from the three guys on the Dallas Stars top line. And I think one of the biggest moments in the game came on the first goal from uh, Rope Hintz. Stars found themselves down 1-0 again, a beautiful sequence uh, from Hampus Lindholm and Taylor Hall to put the Bruins up 1-0. And I had said on yesterday's episode with Ian over at Locked On Bruins, we both kind of agreed that it seemed like this was going to be a game that where the first team that scores gets the win. And while it was true, it certainly wasn't true from that moment on. Uh, it really was like, okay, the Stars need to find a way to respond because they were not good in the first period. That first 20 minutes it was pretty rough to get through. Everything was in favor of the Bruins. They were getting tons of quality chances in their own zone, getting the cycle going. It, the Stars just could not clear defensively. And then even if they did, they had to send the puck in deep just so they could work in a full change. And, and things were starting to snowball a little bit. And Pete DeBoer even talked about it after the game. It, it really could have been a three or four goal deficit in that first period had the Stars not found a way to light a spark and generate a little bit of momentum. And this is where you insert the Dallas Stars top line, who came in in a big moment, a beautiful passing sequence. Joe Pavelski hits. It looks like he was trying to hit Rope hints from the get-go, but things kind of get tangled up with Jason Robertson. In real time, it looked like it just deflected off his skate like a little soccer pass. Just a thing of beauty, whether or not it was intentional or not from Robo, things worked out very, very well. Rope Hintz goes five-hole on Linus Allmark to get the scoring started for Dallas. Again, a huge moment in that game to tie it up, uh, and then the Stars were finally able to generate some momentum, especially in that second period that came out very strong and actually generated the scoring chance less than 30 seconds in, uh, That and that was actually a different line. That, that was the Sagan, Fox, and Marchment line. They, they had some good looks as well throughout the game, unfortunately not able to bury those. But the top line did come through again, still early on in the second period. This time it was just Pavelski and Robertson teaming up to give the Stars the lead. And, I mean, two huge moments in the game for the Stars to start the momentum with his goal from the top line and then also keep that momentum rolling. And it's unfortunate that we couldn't see more, but the Bruins did a good job adjusting to that line 
and of course also killing those penalties. But you need to see players like these three step up in games like this. One of the, I think, biggest issues for the Stars in the playoffs last year is that Pavelski kind of came to play in that series against Calgary, but Robertson and Hintz were kind of nowhere to be seen for the majority of that series. Of course, Robertson really had not a lot of playoff, really no playoff experience going into that. I think now that he has that experience under his belt and has played the way he has this season, I think he and Hintz are set to be more of a factor and I think that things are you know, going to align well for the Stars once the postseason rolls around. If they have Jake Ottinger playing at the top of his game, which it seems he always does when the lights are the brightest, and if we can get this sort of production from the top line consistently, but then the, the, the question is, what comes after that? What, what comes for the Stars when they don't have that top line out there? Again, we saw some decent looks from the second line. Uh, Mason Marchment had two shots on goal, one in particular, a one-timer uh, kind of later on in the game, just almost went in. I believe it was actually in the second period in the late stages. Couldn't bury it. You talk about a guy who desperately needs a goal. Mason Marchment needs a goal. Tyler Sagan had, had some good looks as well. I'm sure a little bit of motivation going up against his former team. Three shots on goal, a blocked shot. 94 percent in the face-off percentage i was also a nice part of this game the stars dominated in the face-off dot 81 percent of face-offs went in dallas's favor and, and even in overtime i think they won every single face-off in overtime and still could not find a way to get the win so the stars have the pieces they have the goaltending and they have the top line but they need something else and that's what we're going to talk about on tomorrow's episode we're going to continue to lean into the trade deadline and talk about why it's so important for Jim Nill and the front office to knock it out of the park. It might not seem super important, but it very much is. The Stars have to get the right player who isn't just, a, oh, this guy's a decent pickup. It has to be someone who elevates the secondary scoring. But again, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. But thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you for subscribing on YouTube, making us your first listen of the day, following us on your favorite podcasting platform. You can also find us on social media at Locked on Stars on both Instagram and Twitter, as well as my personal Twitter account at Dane double underscore Lewis. Again, be sure to tune in tomorrow as we continue to discuss the trade deadline and how the Dallas Stars might operate. Some moves already being made around the league, even in the Central Division. Vladimir Tarasenko, the newest member of the New York Rangers. I'm sure we'll touch on that, talk about Patrick Kane, and also talk about some other smaller names that the Stars could pursue. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I hope you enjoy your Wednesday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.